wanted to talk about the theology behind Pakistan. So, do you know that the Prophet moved from Mecca to Medina for some time uh, to yeah. gather people and then reconquer the Mecca? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, so, we're ex Muslims, uh, Oxymoron. We're, of course. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm telling you uh, oh, the right. theology of Pakistan is similar. They literally oh. call them themselves the new Medina. So even Mimran, so there's two interpretations of it, but the theology behind Pakistan was that we gather the the regions that are most concentrated as Muslims, we gather there and then reconquer the India when they will oppress the Muslims. That has always the been theology of Pakistan. So they call themselves as the new Medina, or Imran Khan calls it the Riyasati Medina. So there's other interpretation of it, of it, it, which is liberal, that Medina had these pacts with different kind of tribes. So they lived in harmony. So you're, so saying, you're saying you're saying the conspiracy is that just like Muslims gathered in Medina and then invaded Mecca, right now the plan is to gather in Pakistan and eventually invade in India? It was at some point of time. So I think they, I think what I'm what I think you're doing is that you are taking the commentary of a fringe loons and then ascribing it to the no 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 this is not fringe loons. I think Ambedkar even Ambedkar would believe it. Ambedkar believed it. So okay, so if a lot prophet of people believes did. it, then I'm in. No, wait, wait, no, wait, like, what do you mean? Like, do you think like Emran Khan, for example, wants to invade India? Do you think Emran Khan wants to invade India? No, he does India? not. No, but okay. at some point of time, it was still like 60s or 70s, I think. It's still probably is. now the uh, army has industrialized itself and made a conflictive economy out of it. So I think uh, they, it doesn't matter if they want or not, but actually it's very feasible for, uh, means uh, they have investment in Kashmir so much that they cannot go back. Was, uh, it, the official, whole, uh, was it official, what? like was that an official position of, an, of a Pakistani leader at some point or is it just a conspiracy yeah. where we think? Yeah, yeah, no, 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 it person. actually isn't conspiracy. There's a lot of research done on this. Uh, I think okay, there's- but was there any, Okay, was there any like officials in Pakistan that were clearly wanting to take over all of India? Yeah, the Jinnah himself. So he was actually, after Pakistan happened, he was trying to get uh, the Hindu majority regions, the Sikhs uh, in Pakistan. So India was actually more believing, even though it did not believe in uh, two nation theory. Uh, India was actually more believing in two-nation theory than Pakistan. So he was trying to make uh, different regions in India that are Pakistan, that are not Hindu majority. They tried to lure Sikhs. They tried to lure in many princes. He also wanted a region that is called Hyderabad. So he did not want, uh, he didn't want Kashmir as badly as Hyderabad, which is Hindu majority region ruled by a Muslim majority king, actually, because it is a very huge area. Uh, okay, so somebody on Twitch who usually disagrees with you is now agreeing with you. He's saying, Sheikh uh, is saying, Pakistan still teach their kids that they want to invade India. Yeah, great. Yeah. Is he from Pakistan <laughs> and learn? And then Sheikh, or... no, wait, Sheikh is saying he's not wrong. And then Sheikh is saying, to be honest, I can't believe I'm agreeing with him. So, <laughs> no, so no, no, but they is, is Sheikh, is he from Pakistan and had to learn that? Or does he also oh, no, think... No, no. No, I think I think Sheikh, I think he's from India, but he's like anti oxymorons positions because anti oxymoron is like usually a little bit more right wingy, like more pro BJP than he he is. So no, I think that's what. If so I, I would still think it's a conspiracy because we had a very similar one in the Arab world where we learned, you know, in Israel they had the two blue stripes. In the Arab yes. world, we think that. What this means river. that they want That's to be from Nile to Furat, from the Nile in Egypt uh, to the Furat in Iraq, and that's what it represents. It does not represent that, but that's a similar conspiracy in Egypt that we think Israel learned that, and that's how they formed their flag, and that's how we had a lot of conspiracies around what they do and what they think, but it's just that. I okay, actually have evidence. Uh, wait, I actually have evidence that what you are, are saying could be true, Oxymoron. Hold on, let me give, you, give me a second. Give me a second. Here, I have actual footage of Pakistani <laughs> officials 
making the same exact same claim. Hold on. My plan is that I will be pilot and I will help everyone. Pilot. Yeah, he's a pilot. Great. When I will grow up, I will be an army and save Pakistan and destroy India. Strong army. Wow. Great. I will open as much educational institution as possible and I am proud to be a Pakistani. The next generation of Pakistan is going to make Pakistan literacy 100%. Not any student, I will grow up, I will help the poor people by giving their homes. By giving them homes. Inshallah, he is going to give homes to everyone. My pledge to my country is that I will finish all corruption and so we will prove to Pakistan is not less than any other country. Pakistan Zindabad! Pakistan Zindabad! I love Pakistan! I will sacrifice my life for Pakistan! I love Pakistan! We all love Pakistan! Pakistan! <laughs> Sorry. Boy, we are you. of Pakistan! We love our country! Pakistan Zindabad! Pakistan Zindabad! We plan to help Pakistan as much as we can Pakistan what? Zindabad! Pakistan Zindabad! My plan is that I will be pilot and I will help everyone. And I will help everyone. Anyways. What, was, okay, I don't mind this. This is too innocent. I don't think uh, radicalization starts like this way. But I was uh, I was there, uh, serious. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> oh, Susie's here. Susie is like, what did I walk in? Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, by the way, I have to re re remind because people just uh, might have joined, weren't there earlier, so I'm gonna re mention the hold on the sign speedy thing here guys so for for people who weren't here earlier make sure that susanna is getting surgery uh, in a couple of hours so make sure you sign this speedy recovery for suzy card i'm gonna share the link in the uh, live chat one more time so this is the this is what it looks like hold on let me put the link in the live chat one more time guys make sure all of you is this is required for you to do that this is going to Help Susie recover faster. Okay. So I put the link in the live chat. You just go and to that link and you just sign the card. You wish her a speedy recovery. And then just sign the card. And then you put your name and you put your message and you click save. Don't click anything else. Don't send. Don't share. Just save it. And that would do it. Okay. Right. What happened to what happened to Oxymoron? Did he went to? Uh, I think Oxymoron went to say, um, to sign the card. Okay, so all of you make sure you do that. Oh, here Oxymoron's back. Did you went to sign Oxymoron? Did you go to sign the card? Okay, I'll sign. Best of luck, Susanna. Okay. Ah. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> all right. What were you gonna say, Oxymoron? You were saying something. Uh, I forgot. I what, what was I saying? Uh, you said that this is not a sign of radicalization. This is not how radicalization works. But you're saying there's a. Uh, you know, I've seen a lot of people do that in India, but they are not radicals. They just see a lot of stuff, but it really doesn't matter you know, in the long run. Uh, okay, well, that's a good take from you. Um, um, I mean, I've seen a lot of uh, Muslims who say they will kill Hindus and they are very nice uh, when Hindus are around. So I've seen. Uh, Hindus who uh, abuse Muslims uh, right and left, but when Muslims are around, they are very nice people. So maybe because they are minority and they would be. No, it, it goes across communities. This this is kind of culture we have, and not uh, it's not as serious as people think it is. Like, uh, okay, that's if good. If somebody th threatens for a genocide, I don't think that people really pick up arms and go for, go killing. So you yeah, saw that. Uh, the problem uh, is the problem is that um, let's say you have like I don't know hundred million people, okay, and then the twenty million of them say stuff like this all the time, but someone they actually but they are not really like that. Like they wouldn't do anything like that, and they actually if they say these are just words that they keep repeating because they were to told to repeat them. But in real life, they're actually very nice people and wouldn't hurt, hurt or fly. Okay. Mm -hmm. But out of the 20 million who say these things, the things of these things, okay, it only t takes a hundred thousand of them to take this very seriously. 
for that to be cause a lot of problem. Do you see what I'm saying, Aksumara? Uh, no, I don't think that. If you institutionalize hate through uh, some industrialization like process, uh, it it only then then only it will lead to genocide or anything like that. If there's no, well, I'm not talking about genocide. I'm talking about like extreme violence and I don't know, um, pe mobs showing up, and, you know, harassing people and lynching and stuff like that. You know, even if you uh, don't like, even before genocide levels, these kind of attitudes. I mean, it's just like Islam. Most people don't. Most Muslims don't take Islam very seriously, but it just takes a very small percentage of them for them to do for it to be a major cause. But that's true about uh, Christianity too. So, but Christians don't yeah. go out of their way. But problem is that if there's institution that uh, there's uh, formal institutions that do this kind of stuff, then it uh, helps facilitate uh, this kind of act. Or generally, there are, there are individual acts which are very spontaneous. Uh, then uh, they don't really matter in a large larger picture as much. Hmm. Um, but you don't think there's any cost to spreading that kind of those kinds of phrase like that talking like that? Like, do you think there's but no? How do you here? how do you stop them? Oh, you just well, you it's, by who us or the government? You could ban no, you could uh, you could ban schools from teaching such having such um, messages, right? I don't think people learn this from schools. Uh, you, could they, make, you could put it not on TV, you could not celebrate it, you could have um, celebrities and politicians to come out and say that this is wrong, this is not how we should be treating or talking about our, you know, Then neighbors. you would be giving them much more attention. So, look, this Dharma sense would happen, then you call them Nazis, these uh, priests were uh, telling to kill people. So, they were telling to 100 people, maybe, and even they wouldn't kill, but the media was... Uh, covering that and some people a lot of people were cheering because they said something brave so it's like how we fight like um um racism against people of color we give it attention and lots of attention and we give education that, and it's the same about how we attempt to fight that how we attempt to yeah. fight any kind of I, actually so, i think in the real world giving it attention makes it like is the best way to address it and make it like and also i think you're being very um you're you're being very too charitable with you know people because i think like these messages does have an effect on some people just because it doesn't affect on everybody like here um for an example like asian american is saying my dad po poured anti-japanese hate into my heart uh, for the longest time, I truly desire to drop all Americans. Oh my God, I'm not, I don't want to say that. Basically, do something really bad to Japan. But not our, this is not our views, by the way. This is something a view that Asian American used to have, but now he doesn't. Okay, but these these kind of messages. Oh, actually, I could talk about it myself about our experience, right? So, for example, the anti-American uh, narratives, anti-Jewish narratives. Growing up with that it has an effect on you. Right, so especially anti-Israel narratives. Oh my God, anti-Jewish narratives. Right, mm -hmm. you grow up with that. It's not just going to be something you just say. It ha it does it does brainwash you to believe the things that you're hearing. Now, uh, in India, it's very different because it, uh, you were in Iran, so you weren't exposed to United States. Uh, Geisha and American probably wasn't exposed to Japan. Uh, I was, um, I was bit... exposed to American United States. We were watching American uh, movies, American news. You weren't talking to American people? No. No, so we live with Muslims. So even Muslims say radical things, I think. A lot of time, a uh, lot of people pretend to take them seriously, but they genuinely believe that nothing's going to happen as such because no, of even... uh, the things that <laughs> people say. But even us, like with the narratives that anti-Jewish and anti-Israel and that they are the worst to people and they mean harm, does that, that does not mean that me or the people I grew up with or my family would kill Jew people around the streets if they see them. Most are peaceful, but it has like one of every 10,000 people to be bad, it's big.
and these ideas when you spread hard, when you spread hate someone will be violent it's not most people it will be a civil war if most people are but there will be terrorism there will be I hate crime yeah, no, yeah you're right now uh, I think Aksimar, the... Aksimar, I think you're being extra charitable to Islamic radicalization today because <laughs> because you're noticing an increase in Hindu radicalization so you want people not to highlight it by saying like hey let's <laughs> we <laughs> like hey look at these Muslims saying radical things don't highlight it it doesn't mean that much they don't really mean it as a way to make us not talk about Hindu radicalization is that your plan is that what you're doing be honest with me is no that what it I, I have always maintained this kind of position that I don't take even a lot of people just get angry over how can uh, uh, I don't I, I don't remember any person who is just who really feared uh, when OVC said that he uh, uh, leave uh, what uh, uh, police for 15 minutes and see what Muslims can do. I think he was trying to grab attention uh, and Muslims were cheering because they thought he was uh, saying something that no one else would say on public stage. There. So they were just cheering for it. A lot of people just say this in private actually so it okay, but, doesn't okay, really you know, but that's about right. in the bay it, it, i mean if you look at how experts talk about this spreading of hateful messages do lead to more hostile environment and dangerous for the minorities so it's not like hey don't ignore it don't highlight it this doesn't mean anything usually it's not that case usually hostile um, uh, hateful rhetoric is an indication of things getting heated and violent okay by the way so uh, like uh, in the life occasion american in life is saying i wasn't i was reading other things maybe i didn't pay attention says did oxymoron just call indian muslims pakistani is that what you did no i did not call them that okay 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 uh okay, somebody's i also agreeing wanted with you. to add okay somebody's uh, like let me be fair to you so i read somebody that is agreeing with you uh saying what oxymoron is saying was true but things are oh but things are changing very fast. People are taking that kind of thing seriously. Okay, so you say maybe what you're saying was true before, but now things are changing and people are taking it very seriously. Probably, but I didn't notice it. I talked with a lot of Muslims too. Uh, they said random stuff. I think it's just uh, the people don't, people are rude in general a little bit, but I think uh, at heart they wouldn't go that far to do it. Okay, now, do you have, uh, is this based on your personal experience of talking with Muslims, or is this based on a yes, study? Yes, yes, but also personal analysis. So I think I pointed at OVC. So I'll talk about something different. He tried to say uh, there was this girl. She tried to say hail Pakistan in India. He was more afraid of that girl saying uh, that kind of stuff. Because uh, then he was about uh, saying that uh, his brother was saying about uh, uh, wiping out Hindus because it really doesn't mean anything when OVC kind of says that. Uh, but uh, when he said, uh, when someone said uh, Hill Pakistan, when he was on uh, uh, in some kind of uh, congregation, so he was actually very scared. He just... Uh, grab that girl and put her aside. So because he was really scared, what uh, his what it would mean to him I at that point of time. Okay, Wait, uh, I think Indian, Indians will understand. I'll okay. I think I'll post video something uh, uh, somewhere. Okay. All right, but I mean, I, I okay. In general, um, I do think that uh, re hateful messages, such as religion itself, right? So. If you, if we want to apply your logical, uh, your reasoning, then we shouldn't even be fighting Islam, okay? Because these hateful teachings in Islam um, doesn't have any impact on people's behavior. So why do, why do we even try to challenge Islam, anyways? You know what I mean? So you're saying hateful messages that people are saying about Indians in Pakistan or in India about Muslims, right? Um, it doesn't. Have, it's just uh, some people are just saying people like hateful things that doesn't have much effect on their behavior okay but we know that that's not the case like we have seen this everywhere we have seen with religious teaching okay so i agree with you that it only has an effect on behavior of a minority people
okay? But it doesn't take that much um, of people to cause a lot of anxiety, stress, instability, and chaos for an entire nation. You know what I mean? You only need 1% of the population to, for them to be driven to the point where, that they're willing to take violent actions for it to, like, I don't know, paralyze an entire society. You could see that with radical Islam. How, what percentage of Muslims are kind of like radical like that? Very low. But you could see like it, it takes less than 1% for something to, like ISIS to all of a sudden take over, like almost cripple the entirety of two countries. You know what I mean? Uh, I think there's something more to it. The, in, if you, if the community is able to institutionalize uh, terrorism or radicalization, then it leads to pro a systematic problem, systemic problem. But uh, otherwise, it's just spontaneous uh, events happening randomly, uh, all over Paris. No, but yeah, people I... joined the ISIS even from the UK and France, and like there were was European Muslims going there to join them because they learned yeah because a uh, institution exists institution like that exists if there's no institution like that for for tra terrorism i think i don't think they but have an outlet to go 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 anywhere well you could institutionalize it very easily i mean it is institutionalized in in, in pakistan and india like all of these are institutionalized we have we have institutions named rss we have hindutva we have like i don't know in pakistan we have taliban we have I don't know. We have Hezbollah Tahrir. We have so so many different things. These are institutions. What are you talking about? If it's if it's institutionalized, I don't, I don't. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder Armin Abadi blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.